So as many of you have liked or seen the video on Andra Schief and the clavichord, and there was a lot of response and reactions, I think it's necessary maybe to follow up that video with another one. Overall, I got an image, a kind of projection in my head of seeing us musicians. If you would compare us to salesmen of merchants, I mean in a good way, we would have stores or shops with large windows and there would be slogans on the windows with uh, what we believe in, selling our products, so to say, why they are the best, price discounts and so on. And when reading the things, because imagine, it's a big thing, Bach, which instruments that he liked, which instruments that he have, we know so little about that, that reading that, it seems to be that we were talking to each other reading out loud our belief system or belief slogans or slogans or price discounts listen i have chocolate that tastes like that and i think that chocolate tastes better and i think that chocolate that i have is a little bit cheaper and you don't know how to make chocolate or oh, he hasn't been researching how to make chocolate i mean it doesn't make sense does it as part of the historically informed performance practice, we should have basements in which we take questions like the one of the Andra Schiff video, you know, what instrument did Bach play on? That should be a normal reflection. And from that basement, we should share information with each other. We should listen to each other's questionings, questions, remarks, ideas, and take them seriously. So, if you say, for instance, I don't care, it sounds, Bach sounds nice on clavichord and harpsichord, great. Go and fill your life with that. But are you not interested in what Bach really liked to play on? I mean, we, we know very little, because I would die to know, you know. I really would, not literally. But so to speak, wouldn't you? Is that not something we uh, have an obligation to if we call ourselves in, in that movement? So if we speak to each other, shouldn't we say, yeah, that's a great question. What are your facts or what, what is the thing that you based your, based your opinion about on? That would be something that brings a step forward and at the end you come out of your basement and you go to play on your stage or your concert or you teach in your class and you teach your belief system that's what it is you are convinced in the way that things are but not doubt each other's integrity not doubt in each other's basement activity so to say in a good way And so, that one video that I made could have opened new research, but it didn't. And it is not about that video that I made. It's so small what I do. But the reactions were, again, If you would summarize that, more like looking for someone who shares the same opinion and then feeling safe, which you shouldn't feel safe. You shouldn't feel unsafe or uncertain, but just don't, that's what I think, don't mix the research part, the basement part with the store, with the stage. Let's not shout slogans at each other. Let's respect each other's integrity and if somebody shouts a statement that shocks you or maybe in first second says that can't that be true because I've never heard about that. Well, step back a little bit and do your own research. Break it down into the facts and you would see that even asking to Bach's will, I mean, he gave some instruments away, we know. There were clavichords. Christian Bach never received them. But asking what's, what's really in his will. Did he have clavichords after his death or not? 
the term clavier the same thing? Talking to people. Oh yeah, of course, it's, it means all keyboard instruments. Really? How was that in Goethe in 1715 or in Leipzig 1725? Because if you read letters, even C.P.E. Bach writing to, to Reitkoff, he knows exactly. They knew when the term clavier were, was used meaning clavichord or the term clavier was used meaning all keyboard instruments. It's so obvious reading his letters. But we don't know anymore. Clavier Übung 1. There is now subtitle, you know. Wouldn't that be interesting to know what Bach meant? And then, again, go upstairs and go do your thing. If you like playing it on harpsichord, great. If research would discover, and it would be very probable, you know, that one of Bach's favorite instruments was the Lautenwerk. Not to be translated by Lüth harpsichord. Lautenwerk. Emmanuel Bach writes about that. It's a pity that that instrument didn't develop further into his, his era. I might be going upstairs, upstairs and say, listen people, I don't have a Lautenwerk and we know very little about that. But I do play it on clavichord. I know Bach had clavichords, but maybe he preferred the Lautenwerk. But I will not go upstairs and say, and pretend as if I didn't research about it. We should be honest also to our audiences. I think that's a basic element of being part of this hip movement, if we want it to survive. And that's really true. I see early music festivals doubting the roots of their existence today. Publishing books even, in which they say after 50 years this evolution is over. And I'm sitting then, really standing still, like now, and asking, why do I know so little? Because that's true, I know so little. And third thing that I want to say, and that's the end of this video. I'm defending, of course, the cause of the clavichord. I'm pushing it, I know. I like my instrument, I admire my instrument. I would, if I had the money, I would ask to make a copy of it and put it somewhere safe because I cannot imagine my life without that instrument. Really not. Not saying that there are not other beautiful instruments, but it's my instrument, you know. And I like the clavichord so much that I'm pushing it and I'm, I realize that. Although I try to stay honest to the way I see the facts, but in a greater perspective, the clavichord needs a little bit, actually much, of that attitude of pushing it a little bit. If we look over today's scene here in the hip movement, let's be honest, it's 95% harpsichord, 5% clavichord. And I know, and I, can, I think I can say it, a lot has to do also with the fact that clavichord building is so extremely difficult. Any instrument building is difficult, but if some t something goes wrong, or not wrong, if something is not really on top level with clavichord building, the instrument produces no sound. Or not enough sound to really match the capabilities of a harpsichord in sound production. And in, I mean, you need some firm tone and firm instrument to play the partitas on, or let alone Beethoven or Mozart. So I know all of that, but historically seen, the clavichord had a much bigger presence than today. And if I would have stated, if I would have a channel around the harpsichord and would have done the recording of the partitas on harpsichord and made, and even would say, like on Wikipedia, I will not go into detail on Wikipedia, I use it, but I have an opinion about that, to read that the partitas are uh, harpsichord suites. I say, what? Nobody questions that, but you should. If I would say that clavichord switch, you should question it as well. Ask me to the facts. But turning the things around, if I would start making videos about that these pieces were written for harpsichord, nobody would, almost nobody, maybe two people in the clavichord group would question that. But saying the opposite, 
then you start reading reactions like, yeah, that's uh, that's that's not based on anything, and Bach didn't have clever codes on his will, and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Why is that? I sometimes wonder. I only can do a little bit of research. Nobody of us has all the research. Nobody of us knows all the facts. And of all people in our movement, I don't read all day. That's one of the reasons that I'm going to do this series CPE back in pieces. It really will force me to read everything in detail. And even then, what does it mean? I just then have read Emmanuel Bach's book and it will give you my view on that. Which might be worthwhile to you knowing what I think about it. And then it would be great if you take that and make it your own and give your opinion. Because that's at the end what this is about. It's opinions that our performance is based on something more than just a performance. I think that's the essence of the hip movement. If we lose that, we lose the movement. And I don't think we want that. Don't you? Okay. It's very windy. The sun is shining. I hope you take something of this video and do something with it. But maybe not really focused and said in the way I would like that of would I would have said it when I would have made this video in my mother language, but anyway. I think you get the message. Thank you for watching, for reflecting on this, and we see each other very soon again, hopefully. Bye, see you next time.